internally in the VHDL code. We're going to debounce this mechanical switch uh, by using code. So the entity, the typical code is given here. The usual library IEEE and the usage of their IEEE standard. Here we got the 1164 arithmetic and sign as well. This is the typical way of doing that. In order to invoke or to use the primitive component, we got to use the library unisim and use the unisim.vc component.all. Next, we define the entity, which is the black box that we have seen a while ago. So that black box is called the entity. We call it as D2JK component. And the port is made up of a J, an input, an in standard logic, K also, in standard logic. B is in standard logic, our very bouncing, very bouncy push button. And Q is the output standard logic, QN which is the complement of Q. And we first list the various component we are going to use, which is made up of an inverter. So we call it component in V, whose port uh, formal declaration. The first is the output. So we, and it's given as O in the formal parameter outstanding U logic followed by the in, which is the in standard U logic. That's the component. Then we're going to use a NAND gate, uh, an end gate with two input. And one of the input is inverted. So that is designated in Siling uniform naming convention. That is N2. B1, B1, one input is inverted. Port, so the output O is standard U logic followed by I0, the first in standard U logic that is supposed to be the inverted one. Then the second one is non inverted, that's called I1 in standard U logic. The other Component we're going to use is a NAND gate with two input. Both input are inverted. And the O is the output. The I0 is the in input. Standard U logic, the I1 is the input as well. Well, from our de derivation, which is not shown here, those are what we need. And we need a data play fluff, which is called by Siling as FDC, meaning data play fluff with clear input. So the typical O is the, or Q is the output, followed by the clock, which is designated by C, followed by the clear designated by CLR, and then the data for that is the way it's supposed to be written down. Then before we begin the description, we need some internal signal that is not shown in the entity port listing. So they should be classified here as signals. And our derivation of the circuit shows we need Three signal that we have designated as S1, S2, S3, they, and data, the standard logic. And then the Q internal, we call Q in, is standard logic. 
Then we use the count an integer that ranges from zero to 500,000. We will see how to, what is the purpose of that later on. From all this related information, because we're going to assign to the, uh, we will provide from outside the system 50 megahertz. So we like to derive a 100 hertz from that so-called CLK100. And this, the, the reset is active high. If it is, if it is, then initialize the count to integer zero, as well as initialize the 100 hertz clock. If it is not reset high, that is meaning else if, then we check whether the count is 500,000. If it is, then we initialize the count. Otherwise, if it is not, if it is not 500,000, then we check whether the system 50 megahertz changes is positive age. That is the meaning of this line. If it is, then we initialize the count and increment the 100, uh, and complement the 100 hertz clock, so it will create a 100 clock, which is 100 hertz. And that's the end of it, if, and then you, you increment the count. But to, to make this to serve as your assignment, I blotted out here the necessary step requirement to produce a 40 millisecond delay clean debound button that will be used to clock the data play plot, the one that just we read off a while ago. So it is created by using a process sensitive to the input bouncy button B and the clean debound 100 hertz as well as the reset. So out of this, it will create a BD, the bounce button, which is part of this assignment you have here. So basically, that is the end of our VHDL code. But a small observation shows this data conversion, one input data line to be converted to to input JK, meaning to say overall the input is JK, and we use the one bit input data to create that overall. It has a slight flaw though. You will find out if the input JK is high and anything for K, pressing the reset button does not reset the Q output line though that is connected to LED zero. While all the other characteristics of a typical JK works quite correctly. And I was proposing here, maybe you can fix the problem. If you can, then this is qualified to serve as one of the possible four assignments that you require to do. So that's all it is. And in order to clearly understand this multimedia, you got to review the schematic that we have derived so you can correctly verify the structural VHDL description that we just laid out. Okay, I will publish now this multimedia. <laughs>